Hey guys, it's Steve here from Bloom Audio. Today, we've got the DX320 from my Basso, their latest digital audio player. So the DX300 was one of the most popular players that we ever had, and due to supply chain issues and things that have been affecting a lot of brands, it was discontinued probably a little sooner than it might have been otherwise. And the DX320 is the follow-up. So considering you know, how well-loved the DX300 was, the question is, is the DX320 a worthy follow-up? Is it an improvement on the 300? Let's take a closer look. So full disclosure, I did actually already unbox this and put it back together for your viewing pleasure. Let's open this up. It's a really a nice looking box. I know Ibasso's standard design here. So pull that off, that's a little firmer. Open it up and you get the player inside. There's a little sticker with some more information about the player. Typically, we'll just take a closer look at the player itself in just a second. But first, we're gonna check out the contents. So we pop this off and we get the accessory kit in here. And inside we get, this is a digital coax cable, USB-A to USB-C charge cable, screen protectors, and warranty card, and a quick start guide. There is a manual, but that's available online. Uh, there's not a full manual package with here. And then the last piece, of this package is the leather case that's included. So the case is whether you get black or blue, you get the green case. I think the green case looks really sharp on black. On blue, it's maybe a little less sharp, but different people, different tastes. So let's check out the player itself. It's out of the case again. So for the player itself, uh, as you can see, it's a pretty big player. It's probably about the size of most modern, like iPhone, Samsung Galaxy, but about twice the thickness. So, you know, you get 4.4, uh, 2.5, and 3.5 on the bottom. On the top, you get your digital, digital coax, and USB, there's a micro SD card slot here, and your play control buttons, as well as your volume wheel. You'll notice on the DX300, the volume wheel was gold, this one's silver. I like the silver better personally. I think there've been some slight improvements to the ergonomics there. The device is kind of slightly asymmetrical, but it does fit nicely in the hand, and it works nicely with the volume knob. So for the device interface, you've basically got a stock Android system here. Should be pretty familiar with a few customizations from iBasso. So out of the gate, you're gonna get just the standard core apps along with two app stores, APK Pure, which is your English language store. It's a free store. Uh, it's not the Google Play Store, so there's gonna be some ads and some other issues there. You can install the Google Play Store on here if you want that full Android experience. There's also Cool APK, which is a Chinese language store. Don't speak Chinese, so I don't use this one. So, you know, you can install any number of apps on here. Uh, for the most part, anything that works on Android is gonna work on here. So I've got Kobuz and Spotify for music. Uh, you can see how, the, how quick and snappy the device is and how smooth the operation is for regular use. There's also the Mango player, which is Ibasso's player. And you can see it's got um, you know standard collection features and all of that. There's a number of settings in here. Some of these settings are duplicated in the system. So, you know, there are certain settings like the playback here, gapless playback that only applies to this player. 
the play mode, uh, different things like that, the equalizer as well. That all just applies to the Mango player. Other things like the digital filter options, that is going to apply to everything. Now, if you're using the player, the equalizer setup here is pretty cool. Uh, you can choose between graphic or parametric. And they both have pretty intuitive setups. If you double tap on here, it gives you all your sliders for adjusting graphic EQ. It's very nice and responsive. And same with the parametric. The parametric is a little bit more complicated. So you get um, six filters and you can change, you know, all pass, uh, high shelf, low pass, etc in order to configure that exactly the way you like. And it's all, uh, you know, touch sensitive and all of that. So I don't think that's the filter that I was looking for there. So getting out of this, so if you want to look at the specific settings here. So when you slide down from the top, you get the option, you can adjust the gain quickly, low, medium, high and the digital filters as well. There's only two digital filters on here. Not a huge difference between the two. You can also select between line out or headphone out. There are a few other options that are inside of here. Under audio, you get some of the same as well as uh, DSD filter and volume compensation options and the volume limitation. Now this is an odd thing on some of the Ibasso players, the 300 and the 320, both are subject to this, is in theory, it is a 64 step volume, zero to 63. So that's been a little bit confusing for some folks, but it's worth noting that that is actually working as designed. 63 is the maximum volume there. You can also disable the volume wheel when the device is off and same with the audio control buttons. You can switch their, switch their placement depending on what you like to be forward and backwards or disable those when the screen is off. You're gonna go for a walk or exercise with this in your pocket. So there's one more thing we're gonna look at, but yeah, overall, this is a really uh, just snappy, easy to use device. If you don't need a full Android OS experience and would prefer a simpler design. Uh, Mango OS is basically just the player. You get all the same features you get out of the Mango player, but the OS is again, just the player. And so you get all the options like that. And again, you get even really lightning fast, faster response here. Uh, it's just, very easy to use, very smooth. Uh, it's a great app and it gives you everything you need for a pure player and a really fast experience. A lot of people will report improvement in sound quality as well. Since the system is running less background processes, there's less of that sort of interference and noise. So uh, it's another great option there that just takes it to the next level in terms of the speed and responsiveness and performance. Like we talked about in our video on the DX240 uh, a couple months ago, Ibasso's players are known for having this real, really neutral reference sort of sound, uh, generally something pretty energetic. And so where the, the 220 was probably the best example of this with a sound that was just detailed, just energetic, it was very, you know, very, just very reference, very easy to pick out everything, like uh, all the detail was right up front with the 220. Now the 300 kind of went a different direction with a little bit more of a relaxed sound, kind of these smoother, more liquidy highs, maybe just a little touch of extra bass, because everybody wants more bass. And 320 follows more in the line of the DX300, where it is tuned a bit more musical, than it is true reference, even though the general character is still very much neutral. So where the DX320 moves away a little bit from a true neutrality would be in its presentation of the bass and the treble. So in the bass, 
At first, my impression was it was fairly linear, uh, neutral sort of base. And it, it is definitely linear. There's not like a clear mid base hump or a shelf up into the sub base. There is just some overall lift in the base that just gives it a little, that little bit of extra oomph compared to some of the other more neutral sounds out there, um, like something like the DX220. Now, in the treble, it feels there's good treble presence, uh, but it's just got that little bit of contouring that gives you the smoothness where you have good presentation of the upper range, but you don't have harshness or sibilance or any kind of fatiguing character there. It's a little bit forgiving, too, of, of older recordings and that sort of thing uh, because of the way that those upper mids and treble are constructed. Now, in the mid-range, you do get very full, detailed mids that, again, they, they put the detail up front and they give it that weight and thickness that sort of just, you know, helps build the entire sound of a very natural overall tonality. It doesn't really feel like anything's missing or anything's strongly emphasized. The construction of the 3D image is very strong. The X320 is going to deliver you that wide sound stage, really strong imaging. And that mid-range again lends into that imaging because you have a natural timbre and a good weight to instruments in the mid-range. You get just this very realistic, weighty presentation of all those pieces in the image. So you know that that stereo image doesn't just put things in different places with you know that three-dimensional sense of depth and width in the positioning. It puts them there in a place that feels realistic, that feels like the singer or the guitarist or whatever else it is, the violin, the cello, that has real weight to it. For comparison today, I brought in the Ashtolin Kern SE180. So SE180 and DX320 are about $100 apart in price. Both of them feature you know, some form of swappable modules. The SE180 has these all-in-one modules which replace the amp and DAC, you kind of pop these off like that. You know, the DX320 includes these amp modules, so it only includes the amp, not the DAC, like the Ashtol and Kern version. Uh, and they both are overall uh, largely tuned with a more of a, a reference sort of delivery. Uh, and so, yeah, I thought these would be a good comparison to sort of look at in the same price range and a lot of similarities between the two. So in terms of the, the build and the look of the devices, SE180 really gets a minute to shine here. Uh, you know, just this well-contoured aluminum construction. It is a little bit weighty, uh, but it feels nice in the hand. You get this kind of tactile volume knob, uh, as well as, you know, this control button. Now, this is one thing, this sort of play, pause, double tap thing is not my favorite choice, but in the overall look and feel of the device, you know, Astel and Kern really, you know, kills it almost every time. You know, DX320 is a solid build. It's a little bit lighter. It doesn't feel premium in the same way that SE180 does. The volume wheels, not really my favorite piece of the design. And, you know, these, now you do get three buttons for, you know, play forward back rather than one. So that's a step up. But otherwise, uh, just that kind of first impression, SE180 definitely has a bit more of a wow factor there. The interface is where DX320 gets more of a win, though. So in terms of just the general functionality as a player, as a pure player, they're pretty close. DX320 is clearly faster, but there are some elements of the Ashtol and Kern UI and some of the features on there that I do like. Uh, but when you go beyond just the basic player performance and add in things like the app support and the other options, 
DX320 really kind of takes off there because of the level of customizability you have. You can install different players, all sorts of apps and other things, along with the performance. And you know, SE180 is an improvement as it has the update to sort of get your one touch install of apps rather than side loading like on previous Astral and Kern devices. But again, that that DX320 experience is definitely going to be better for most users, especially you know, if you're familiar with, with Android smartphones at all. In terms of the sound, they're both in the same ballpark in terms of the tuning. Uh, you know, you're going to get a, a sound that leans more towards a neutral reference delivery. You're going to get great sound stage and great imaging. Now, the SE180 feels a little more recessed in the bass than DX320 did. Now whether that's the, the SE180's bass is really more true neutral and there's a little lift in the DX320 or there's maybe just some small recession in the SE180's bass, I'm not sure. But that's definitely a difference. And the mids as well feel a little bit less weighty, less thick and rich in the SE180 than they do in the DX320. So 320, again, we, we already talked about those really full, rich mid-range that it has. SE180 doesn't quite match up to that. Now, in the treble, SE180 has a lot of great characteristics in terms of the definition, the resolution that it's delivering. This might be more of a matter of preference versus the smoother, more, again, sort of liquidy treble of the 320 versus the slightly more incisive treble of the SE180. That might be up to your preference uh, as well. But again, I mean, these both sound great. These both deliver incredible detail and imaging. There's just some small differences in the tuning that might make the difference one way or the other in your decision. With each successive release, Ibasso really does seem to be fine-tuning different aspects of their players, whether it's the tuning or the interface. Now, DX320 definitely has a strong tuning, great presentation of detail, uh, just very excellent overall sound quality. But the thing that's really exceptional about it, I think, is the interface. So in this progression, you know, if you go back to the DX220, uh, the performance was decent in terms of the user interface, but probably not on the same level as most smartphones from that time. Get to the DX300 and you get something that is really on par with most kind of mid-tier average smartphones. With the 320, I think they've really cleared that next hurdle and giving you something with a user interface and experience that's on par with you know, top tier flagship level smartphone experience. So I think you put that all together, uh, you know, the great tuning, the, the refinement we've seen there in, in the tuning and the sound quality, along with this sort of interface performance. And DX320 is probably the best app out there right now under $2,000. Thanks for watching. Check out the DX320 and a lot of other great products at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more high-five personal audio content.